Good morning, everyone. Congratulations on being here before me. Apologies, Google told me the trip was shorter than it was. And here we are. Um, so if you have an old version of the timetable, it says I'm talking about Conky. The slide says otherwise. So we're talking about creating a leap replacement from Alp, which was my Hack Week project. Um, and so a good place to start when you're creating a project is thinking about why you're doing it. Sometimes the why might just be for fun, in which case, great, go have some fun. Um, in this case, I have a desktop system that doubles as a KVM server. Rebooting it is annoying. I don't want to move to Tumbleweed or a transactional-based machine because of that. And so Leap is better there. And I saw a lot of feedback from the OpenSUSE community also saying they would like some form of Leap. Um, so that is the why. And so then next I wanted to look at, once we have the why, what are the parts of Leap that we care about that if we're going to make a Leap replacement, we kind of want to keep? And so not using transactional updates is important because we want to be able to migrate from 15.4, 15.5 machines and keep a read-write file system. Um, I didn't want to use containers in the core of the operating system. If there's ALP workloads that do a job and do it well, sure, let's use them, but let's keep the desktop and basic system services running from RPMs as they are. Um, I wanted it to be something that's easy for the community to build on, because I can make something for me that's fun and that's great, but I thought I could also make something for me that's fun that other people could also use and make into something much better. Um, I have use cases where I still need X11, so I wanted support there. Um, I have always been interested in the embedded, especially the Raspberry Pi hobbyist market, so I wanted it to be something that could be light enough to do that. and. Where possible, I wanted to, con and people were willing to support it, I wanted to continue to have desktop apps as RPMs because I find that easier. And so now we come onto the name, which is the thing that got the most comments on the mailing list. So we're going to talk about it first. And Noel is a small low hill with a rounded top. And so I came to this name because we went up in the Alps playing extreme sports. We were looking for a nice place to have a picnic, picnic to ca casually relax to keep doing what we've been doing for years. And so many of you might recognize this, the most famous picture of a grassy knoll. And in Australia, grassy knoll is also a brewery that makes good beer. And so that is where the name came to. In other parts of the world, it means other things. And as such, we are no longer referencing it. Now, for me, the coolest thing about this Hack Week project was I had people working with me on it. And so there was myself. Maurizio is the XFCE maintainer. When I started thinking about doing this, I thought it was reasonably likely that he might want to join me. Um, but then Valentin joined as well, and that was great. He wanted to learn stuff. And so he learnt stuff by implementing GNOME. Um, and then we had Lubosh, who wanted to come and play with, I think Angular is the new name for deinstaller, but he wanted a base to play with that, so he joined us as well. Um, now, the overall concept. This sounds pretty simple. Basically, Leap is the same as Tumbleweed, except for the way we do releases and how often we release them. ALP is based off Tumbleweed, and so if we build ALP in the way we build Tumbleweed, surely we must get something like Leap. And normally when an idea in software sounds that simple, it is not, and it breaks and there's a million issues. This is the first time ever where it was that simple, and so in a hack week we managed to achieve what we were heading out for. Um, so a bit on the scope, obviously there was four of us, or two or three um, for 
one week, so we couldn't do everything. Um, personally, for me, I wanted to get X11 in Enlightenment working because I wanted to see that if ALP is the future, is it possible for my man manpower and maybe help from someone else to maintain everything, which I found it was. We also had XFC, obviously, and Yast. Then when Valentin joined, we decided to add GNOME, but just the desktop parts, not all the applications, because that was too much work. And so now the design just followed the basic leap setup of having one repository that's SUSE or ALP or wherever that decides to come from, it didn't really matter to this project. And then we added the equivalent of the Leap backports repo where we could add our packages. And then because Leap puts its image building in a separate repository, we did that as well. Um, now the repository setup, if you want to do this yourself, it is there. I have lots of slides that I'll skip over today. today. If you want to do this, this is how. Go back and look at it. Um, so at the end of the day, where did we get to? We added 392 packages to get a basic GNOME, XFCE, Enlightenment, and X11 on top of whatever was in our server or whatever it was called at that point. And we had a working bootable desktop and live CDs. So one of the nice things about the live CDs is they list all these dependencies manually. So you can see we have all the packages in the world for hardware enablement. Again, if you want to read them, they're on the wiki or slides, um, a few more to get audio working. GDM is the one that annoyed me. For those of us who use GDM with not GNOME, I don't know why I want GNOME Color Manager installed, or I don't really need GNOME Theme Extra, or the GNOME Settings Daemon, or maybe I need GNOME Shell, I don't know, but there's GNOME Bluetooth, probably not for GDM. So there are some dependencies there that maybe we should clean up in the future. Um, but on the plus side of that, having all those dependencies, the list we actually needed for GNOME was pretty small. And then, again, the list of things we needed to add to get Yast. Uh, the software manager worked. We skipped a bunch of the plugins, that, modules that were hard and required other dependencies, but that we thought might go into our workloads. But the basic stuff like the software, user configuration, that only needed these few, few packages. And as I said before, I'm going fast this morning, but there is a brilliant wiki page which lists most of everything that we needed and why. So on to building images. Again, I'll go through this reasonably quickly. The most important thing I didn't know when I started this project that I know now is if you want to build an image, you need to have that in your project config then magically images will start being spitted out. Um, at the end of the day, we basically copied the whole project config from Tumbleweed to save time figuring out what we did and didn't need. Um, but then one of the things we did, because we didn't want, say, LibreOffice and a bunch of other desktop things that would have taken more time, we made cutback versions of all the patterns with just the packages we wanted. And so then we ended up with some different branding, and we had to add some more prefer things. Um, and two more packages you need to build images. Um, and so with our Kiwi images, as you can see, we've added a couple of repositories here. Uh, we turned off root snapshot and all the transactional stuff, which is to take out and make it non-transactional is a two is a two light XML change. Um, and we had some other changes. You have to change the ALP release package, which creates the OS release file to say that this is not tumbleweed and it is not quite Susan's ALP, it's some weird hybrid of whatever I came up with on the day. And again we did some we did some work with the patterns because we didn't take all of them. We found we needed these X11 things. Um, and so, unlike Lee Bosch, who had to rewrite most of his talk, I made this part of my talk easy and just had one slide called the future. So at which point, if you want to know about the future, 
go rewatch the recording of his, of his talk. It changes every week, and maybe sometime after Caesar Con we'll know what's going on. Um, but now I haven't actually tested this, so this could do anything. But I think if I have a look in here. Um, I probably do I have a that guy. This is a demo that may or may not work because I should have tested it, but it worked in a previous version of this talk. It would work better if I could copy and paste. So one of the other weird things I managed to do in this project is we have an out live CD for enlightenment. We do not have a tumbleweed or leap live CD for enlightenment, but we do have an out one, so I should fix that at some point. But here we are booting up the live CD. And it's been a minute. But while this is starting up, is there any questions for anyone from anyone? If not, that's all good. You can come and find me afterwards. Here we have the Enlightenment first run wizard. Um, fun fact about Enlightenment: if you pick these bottom two, you get upstream. You get the configuration upstream likes. If you pick the top one, you get the configuration I like. So always do that. And we don't have Bluetooth enabled. And there we have Enlightenment running on ALP in X11 with a very limited list of applications. And so if there's no other questions, that is my talk. Thank you for watching. Not in, not in, I didn't try to use it in production because I knew how many things were missing, but I've had the virtual machines. We also had the XFCE and the GNOME live images that run, and KVM images as well when we had a bit of a play with them and did some stuff, but no, I didn't install it on any physical hardware because that would have just annoyed me because there's no applications yet, which was part of the scope. But I guess I can say to wrap up, I discovered the, num the amount of work I would have to do to make this work. If ALP stays as it was six months ago, which has already changed five times since, but if ALP stays something like that, then the amount of work to put together a concept like this that the rest of the community could build on was enough that probably I and a couple of other people could maintain in our spare time if we had to. especially if SUSE ever figures out what they're doing with the desktop stack. Right, any more? Cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs>